Just imagine taking a deep breath, but not really being able to take that deep breath. IPF is uh, it's it's a short form for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and fibrosis means it's a bunch of scars. Pulmonary means lung, and idiopathic means we don't know what the cause is for this disease. How could we have something that absolutely destroys lungs and we sit here and say, we don't know why that happened? Three years ago, my mother was diagnosed with IPF. She had a lingering cough, and I continued to tell her, I think you need to get to the doctors, and she did, and they prescribed her antibiotics, saying it was just one of those coughs in the winter that is hard to get rid of. Patients will tell you about how it was six or eight months that they often felt lost till they had the right connection and the right person diagnose uh, their disease. You know, when they hear that they have pulmonary fibrosis, they're relieved that they don't have cancer. And, uh, you know, really, uh, in some cases, uh, it would be better to have cancer because the, the risk of dying from the pulmonary fibrosis is, is really very substantial over a small number of years. The chance to survive breast cancer is like 80% now. The chance to survive IPF is zero. There is no cure for IPF. The only thing that we can do is try to slow the progression of the disease. The scar formation, which is a natural process in, in life, so you have a wound on your skin, it has to heal, it bleeds, it has a scab, and it has to develop a scar. But that process stops once the wound is closed. And in a disease like IPF, that process doesn't stop. It's a reason why the course of pulmonary fibrosis is, is sometimes unpredictable. And people are stable for quite a time, and then they have a flare and things really abruptly deteriorate. Sometimes people progress very rapidly within months, and sometimes it's very, very slow over years and years. We don't know what sets it off in the first place in most cases. We understand a lot about the cells and molecules that are involved, but not what triggers it. Scars typically start at the outside of the lungs, uh, gradually get worse over time. Within a couple of years, these scars build up and the patient is getting breathless. Each day becomes um, a little more difficult. See your wife, <laughs> um, you know, shoveling snow when you can't. And, and um, your, your sense of usefulness diminishes. Eventually, it progresses to the point where people are short of breath just sitting. Their body won't be able to get enough oxygen, and most people will die from respiratory failure. And you inevitably know that these patients are going to get there. It's a matter of when. One of the things that we're studying and researching is how can we predict which way a patient's going to go so that we can tailor their treatment appropriately. The reality is that people, in spite of any treatment that we have today, uh, do deteriorate, and that the mortality from idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is still very high. Some days I think it's many, many years to go, and, and other days I think, oh, this, this is too exhausting, too tiring. Uh, and not an awful lot of fun. It's not a disease that many people know about, and we need to create awareness. We need to have more discussion. When you have a rare disease like that, you have a, a real problem in that there isn't enough attention directed to it, not enough sort of impetus put behind solving the problem. It's out there. It's not just 10, 12 people in Canada who have it. It's much more significant than that between like 12 to 14,000 Canadians who have this disease. You have a very serious disease here. I'm somewhat frightened of, um, of not being able to breathe and, um, and what that does to your body and, um, and what it does to your head. Uh, <laughs> The brain is a funny thing. It causes you to think of all kinds of things you don't want to think of. Um, like, what is it like really dying? Um, what is it like lying in bed, not being able to do anything? We have to have hope that in the near future, we'll be hearing that boundaries are being pushed and discoveries are being made and that people who have idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis will have answers. 
blue lips signifies a, a very serious stage. Inevitably, that's what ends up happening to IPF patients, and imagine struggling for breath. To me, it's, it signifies um, a, a significant end for someone, and, and you know, who wants to see anybody with blue lips?